Yeah, you're going to hear Oscar off and on. Hello, everybody. Good evening. Y'all, come on. Let's have a little conversation. Let's have a little tea time with tea. This is a conversation that we've needed for a little bit, okay? So, we're going to talk about veterans, mental health, a uh, change that's been done today, effective today, for um, members of our armed forces. So, definitely would like you guys to put in your two cents. Come on over. Let's have a little conversation. Yeah. Wonderful program that has been started. And I'm seriously hoping that this is something that we can expand on. We discussed um, civilian mental health yesterday. So now, let's talk about civilian mental health. We really got a long way to go in this country to help our fellow Americans to assist our fellow Americans. It's about time we got that ball rolling. Oh, thank you. You know I always need someone to help me to straighten things out. There you go. Starting today, effective today. Hello. So, Veterans Comprehensive Care and Treatment Act. That's what this is. This is a little additional help for our veterans. For those of us that decided they would serve the people of this nation. Yeah. Like the Lifeline 988 that I was talking about yesterday, this is for veterans. This is for those who serve us. This is long overdue. Okay? Long overdue to help our veterans to recover from everything that they gave for this nation. So really... It's all about the veterans this time. There's also a codicil in there. So I can be read. Well, you know what? There are a lot of veterans who are committing suicide. Over a hundred a day. So if you won't use it, 98, fine with you. It's about helping those who want the help. They just go to the ER for any issues. So in other words, 2020, you're not for helping our veterans, right? You're not for helping our veterans, getting them the help that they need. Hey, Mr. Peeps. We had a little conversation about civilian mental health yesterday. So today, veterans. This live is about our veterans and what we can do to help them and serve them. Read the room, and moderators, block, kick out, block, kick out. We are focusing on the veterans, nothing else. That's it. That's what this live is about. If you're not with that, if you're not interested in that, scroll on. No. 
all veterans. Help our veterans. Tell you what. Hey, Inquisitor. Before you build another house, would you burn down the one that you live in? I didn't think so. Most common sense people understand. If you're going to move into a new house, you don't burn down the one you got. You start building that other one. And this is a step. This is a step in the right direction to better serve those who chose to serve and defend this nation. Well, this just got voted on and just got instituted today. Yeah, effective today. You know someone who's a veteran? Even if they don't have transportation, because that's actually included in this. If you don't have transport, contact them. They'll pay for your transportation. VA doesn't have openings. You can go to a private psychiatric clinic. You can even spend time in rehab. Yeah, wait a minute. Hold on. I think I took a picture of that. Make sure that I quote this properly. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Ah, don't tell me I did that. Okay, yes. It includes inpatient and crisis residential care up to 30 days. Yes, it's for counseling as well. For 30 days, outpatient or inpatient care for up to 90 days. Sorry, outpatient care up to 90 days. Residential inpatient care up to 30 days. Treat is the number one thing, 16. Because before that, there was nothing. People think it costs, yet when it comes to saving your life, they'll, they'll want help. Yeah, this was actually something that was um, voted on to be instituted today back in early or early or mid-2020. So yes, this was instituted under Trump. Uh, that is a pro that not with this one. Dwight. Now, if you know something I don't, because it's not saying you have to prove you don't have the money for travel. Maybe, if you know something I don't, Dwight, educate. Educate. You're at a keyboard. If you got some alternatives that you can suggest... Tell your veterans, yes. Tell spouses of veterans who may be desperate and not sure which way to turn. Here's an option for them. There are men married to women in the military. There are women married to men in the military. Boost this. Share it with them you're a family member and you know someone's having problems with PTSD suicidal ideation this is how you get your foot in the door exactly here's the thing lady Moore, about homeless veterans there was a bill it was HR 4673 that was last spring Every veteran would be automatically registered with the VA. If that had gone through along with this, it would have been fantastic. Everyone, if you've been in the military, you're registered with the VA. 
That would take a bump out of the road. They have to be 30% or higher to get all travel covered and 0 to 20% service connected with inner. But this is strictly for mental health. You don't even have to be diagnosed as having an injury, Dwight. You were just military and you're having a psychological problem. Go with it. As I said, the H.R. 4673 bill, that was called the Evest Act last spring. It failed to pass. It failed to pass. It would have made it so much easier for members of our military. Those who maybe when they're being discharged or leaving service, they didn't have to go register with the VA. You were immediately given a card and immediately handed, here's a list of offers, off, off, blah, 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 offices. Daniel probably has a lot of info. I, I invited D Daniel to come over, actually. Yeah, it died in the Senate. Damn. But these two working together would have been fabulous for the members of our military. It would have been fabulous. But this, this came under Donald Trump's administration. Yeah. Oh, he's on a live. Dang it. Well, I told him to come over about 6 p.m. So maybe he'll come over. Maybe he'll remember. But this is wonderful. Right now, we've got so many veterans unaliving themselves, drinking themselves to death, doing incredibly dangerous things to themselves. And their husband or their wife or the members of their family don't know what to do. How do I help them? What do I do? I can't seem to get anybody who can help me to help veterans, to help my loved one in crisis. Absolutely. Why don't you tell Biden, I'm sorry, are you ready for this conversation, 85 or not? Are you telling our veterans to take a seat and cry, 85? Thank you. Goodbye. Oh, in case any of my moderators were not in here when I said it, block, kick their ass, block. Kick their ass. Because we're having a conversation that pertains to those who chose to put their life on the line. It is a, it is a wonder. This is something. It blows my mind. We had people come home from Vietnam. No one thought of this. We had people come home from Afghanistan, Iraq, and no one thought, hey, we got to really give a good opportunity for veterans to be helped. Honey, no one's copying Trump. This happened under the Trump administration. Okay? Do you know what some of that funding went to, 21? Transportation and training for family members to be able to help and better assist their veteran family members. So nothing was being snuck in there. It would have been a really good bill. It would have been a... Now, 
let me let me clarify this. This is a two year, a two year pilot program. This is a two year pilot program. So that means in two years, the Senate and the House have to vote to make it permanent. They have to vote to make it permanent. Uh, there's your question. Why was this not done to our veterans from Vietnam? Our veterans from Iraq? Our veterans from Afghanistan? Jump on it now. There you go, 59. This is to help. And there is nothing I see. Exactly, Texan. So we've kind of flipped over the veterans and the help that they need. It should be permanent, Travis. I, that should have been a no-brainer. Yeah, since Korea. Because PTSD is not new. World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, every freaking war we've ever had. There have been those who came back with PSD, PTSD. VA husband. Well, how do you fix it? It was named different. Oh, yeah. They, they, I think they used to call it being shell-shocked. But this is a step in the right direction. Yep, shell shot. This is a step in the right direction. Yep, you're absolutely right. We, in this country, we kind of forget about our veterans. Oh, except on Veterans Day. You know, Veterans Day, and then Memorial Day for those who passed away, and Veterans Day for those who are serving now. Yep. Break them and then toss them aside. This is something. I love this. I love this. Part of this also is. They will offer. For four years. Added into this bill. Even though it's after a pilot program. For four years. Training will be offered. To family members. Training will be off to family members. There will be wives who will say, I don't know how to deal with his PTSD. When he withdraws. When I can't reach him. How do I help him? That training is available in him. That training is, the funding is in there. Uh, Mr. Peebs, Sparkle, this is a conversation. This is what it's about. If they can't stay focused on this, if they can't bring suggestions or ideas, bye. Because we're not going down the rabbit hole. We're going to stay focused on those who have given their lives, their mind, their body for America. While the vet serves, the family serves. Yes, absolutely. Spouses as well. So, be they husband or wife, whoever served in the military for the next four years, you can actually get training on how to handle PTSD, how to help someone who's, who's, um, who's well, actually experiencing it. For the spouses, the impossible may become possible. Exactly. This is the gem of this. Look at this. Residential care up to 30 days. Outpatient care for 90 days. During those 90 days, that gives you 
at least a crack in the door to help this person, to help your family, because we are losing veterans every single day who are committing suicide. Start in, and you can use this together. I read you can actually use this together. So 90 days, residential, inpatient. I'm sorry, 30 days, followed by 90 days outpatient. Uh, Texan, there you go. If you're going to say, it's the, well, the problem is mental health, fund this shit permanently. It is service, con um, service connected. This is for veterans. Uh, make real. Yesterday we were talking about a suicide crisis hotline called 988. You can dial it on your phone. That's for civilians. Okay? That's for you and me. If you're a veteran, today we're talking about veterans. Yeah, both sides agreed to vote for this. And I want y'all to understand, this happened in 2020. No, you did not get off track. Texting, you did not. This was voted on in 2020. This is a Trump initiative, okay? This was voted on and instituted under Trump. PTS. And this starts today. Okay? This gets instituted and it starts today. Yes, of course. Yes, veterans need the help. Absolutely. And this is just a little crack in the door for those who chose to put their life on it. Um, what TikTok notice? I'm sorry, Lady Moore. Let me know. But I just decided that I'd do a back-to-back -back mental health live. Here's the thing. Hey, Campbell. You don't have to go to a VA facility. You can use non-VA health care facilities. Non-VA health, mental health facilities. Okay? In Cleveland, there is, um, what is it called? Lutheran Hospital. There, second third and fourth floor are all psych. They also have psych counseling there. That's Cleveland, Ohio, West 25th Street. Look in your area. See if you, ha you have a hospital near you that has psych counseling or intervention. Non-VA health care for free emergency health care. There you go. want. This is what we need. Hey, Mr. Peeps. Hello. I just wanted to let you know the uh, that TikTok warning that uh, somebody mentioned. I saw uh -huh. it. It was, a, it was a bot account uh, with zero followers following three that had the TikTok logo to try to make it look official saying, if you don't end this live in 90 seconds, it's going to be taken down. So I booted them. Thank you very much. Very much. <laughs> Thank you for doing this. You are doing no awesome work. And anybody in here that is against this, get the fuck out because this is not the place for that. We're not talking about right, left, who did this. This is for the veterans, okay? If you, you don't go. like it, leave. And the good thing is, this was actually set up under Trump. That's fine. It went through, it passed, it got signed off on, 
and it starts being instituted today. That's fine. Now, props, we, to Trump. We, 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 props to Trump. See, we can do that. I mean, the divisiveness in this country has to stop. I mean, right. this is for unity, for veterans, the ones that protect us, that, that put their lives on the line to make sure we live this life that we live. Whether prosperous yeah. or not, you're yeah. still here. This is an everybody issue. Because I don't know anybody that doesn't have at least one member of the military in their family. Texan, I see you. I'm a fellow Texan Democrat, but I appreciate everything you're saying here. Hey, Texan. <laughs> I've seen you two, two commercials already today. Great. Fabulous. Now, yesterday I was talking about civilian mental health. There is a lifeline crisis, suicide crisis hotline. It is 988. That's for civilians. Today, we're focusing on the veterans, giving them what they need. That's it. Pete, I thank you so much because thank at the you, beginning Mama. of this live, I said, if they're not focused on this conversation, block, delete, block, delete. I've been booting like a mofo. <laughs> <laughs> and I appreciate that. <laughs> Love you. Love you. Bye-bye. Unity and respect. There you go. And our unity is to support our veterans. Going to back to site, but try for the info. Sure. As I said, the, the one thing that I really, really love about this is you can go to a non-VA healthcare facility. Sure, come on in. This is just about supporting our veterans. And this is way overdue to help our veterans. Your wife was turned away last week. And yeah. Hey, look for a non-VA facility and see if you can get her directed there. Oh, hey, hey Miss T. Uh, I just wanted to say, to let everybody know too, um, because I had issues getting through with the with the VA at the beginning. Um, mm -hmm. There's another branch of the VA that is called the Vet Center. It mm -hmm. is linked with the VA. However, the VA cannot see anybody in the VA cannot see any files that the Vet Center produces. They're linked, but they're but they're dependent. The other mm -hmm. advantage of the vet center is everybody that works at the vet center from the counselors to the people that come in are all combat vets. So everybody in that building knows exactly what you're going through. It's not like you're trying to speak to a civilian that has no idea what we've been through. Mm -hmm. So if the VA turns, turns anyone away, please look, look and see if you have a vet center and go start talking to them. They can also link into the VA and kind of fast track you to get you in to see a doctor because they are linked with the VA. The VA just cannot see, access their files at, at, for any reason. Cool. All right. Someone said Partners for Patriots out of Iowa. Some, I guess that's another group. Uh, I, I'm I'm from I'm I'm from Alabama, so I, I don't know about that group, but I do know that when I first started struggling with my PTSD, I went to a support group at the vet center. It was all combat vets. The counselor was a combat vet, so they know exactly what you're going through. They know about the anniversary dates and you know how that affects us um, for traumatic losses. It is really beneficial because it's easier. To talk to somebody that has been through it, then talk to somebody that all they have is is the book knowledge. They don't have the practical experience of dealing with the stuff we've seen in combat. Right. I understand. I understand, sir. Thank you. I appreciate you popping in and dropping that knowledge. Thank you for what you're trying to do, ma'am. I really appreciate it. You are welcome, sir.
Any child. Is there a vet center in every state? Hmm. So, yes. And, and matter of fact, most of them have multiple states. Now, granted, they're generally in like some of the bigger cities. Like I know in Alabama, for for instance, it's like Huntsville, Birmingham, Montgomery, and Mobile. So it might be a little bit of a drive. Mm -hmm. um, but it is beneficial. It They do help. Um, because you have, like I said, you have other people to bounce and get ideas off of, of what works and what doesn't to gotcha. keep you from go, going down that rabbit hole of self isolation or self medication that tends to be once you start down there, it's extremely hard to get, get the help that you need. Okay. Hold on. Let me see. Um, if anybody has. The 800 number, Vet Center, national number. Mm -mm, mm -mm. It's not giving me what I want. The, nah. Well, but one more thing. To, the number, to, drop it in the comments. Well, and when I, repost, when I repost this over on Spotify, I'll be sure to put the, um the, if there's an 800 national number, I'll be sure to put that in there. Well, one other thing about the Vet Center, too, Miss T, is once you are a patient of theirs, so to speak, they actually offer counseling and support groups for the significant others, whether it be your spouse, your girlfriend, your fiance. Once you are in and they see that you do have PTSD, they do offer offer for your significant other. You you will not be there. It will be a separate counselor that is different from yours. But again, it's a, it's a fellow combat vet that understands what you're going through. And then they have support groups for the, the family members to try to help everybody in the family deal with it and progress forward. All right. All right. Woo. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate yeah. that because when I have my little lives, I want people to bring information. Uh, 877 War Vets. Okay. 877 War Vets. All right. I'll definitely add that. Sir, thank you. You are more than welcome, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Be well. I got to follow you. Oh, my goodness. Soldier 88. Yeah. Guys, I just wanted to do this live as maybe a way of putting some information out there that might help a husband help his wife or help a wife help his husband, her husband, with the new speaker in the house. I don't know anything about this. This is from 2020. Okay, this is not right now. This is not something that was just set up. It was officially negotiated back in 2020. It just took effect today. And that's it. Anybody else want to pop in and make a quick comment? I was hoping that Daniel might have been able to pop in. Ah, dang it. Or Swerve, but I think Swerve's down for the count for a little bit. Yes, Campbell. Cam yeah, Campbell. What's up? Excuse me, Miss T. <laughs> I just want people to understand. No, yes, it's not about politics. This is about humans. This is about people who chose to put their life on the line. I don't know about y'all, but I've never been in the military, but I just had my youngest, ne not, no, not quite the youngest, uh, my 18-year-old nephew joined the Army. 
My brother served Navy. My dad served Marines. So, cousins been in the Navy, the Air Force. Well, we got one that's in this Coast Guard and we don't talk about him. But we love him anyway, okay? Now, the 988, that is the civilian crisis line. That's not the military crisis line. But please, put up the Lifeline 988 crisis line for suicidal ideation. Tell him to copy all paperwork. I will pass that on to him. Yes, it'll help Republicans and Democrat veterans. It doesn't matter. Last time I checked, I don't think our members of the military are walking around with an R or D pin. They may be wearing a flag, but that's it. Have three copies of all paperwork. Oh, I will pass that on to him. They, ha they have veterans just ask. Oh, okay, thank you. We're all Americans. And this is going to help our fellow Americans. Full stop. As I said before, we could have used this for veterans who came back from Vietnam. Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan. Oh, Lifeline also has a line for depression. Thank you. Thank you. Poor mental health care. And you know what, Z? It's time to turn that shit around. It's time. If you want people to defend this nation... You have to give them the fucking support they need when they come back. Okay? You gotta be willing to give. Open that damn wallet. Okay? Open that damn wallet for the people you chose and asked to go put their life on the line. Well, you know, that's a little bit too expensive. What's, what's the cost of a life? What's the going cost for life? Yeah, <laughs> different branches will talk trash to each other. My other nephew is in the Marines. My brother was in the Navy. The biggest laugh I get is when we have a barbecue and he's calling him a jughead. And the other one's talking about how, yeah, how, yeah those bell bottoms y'all wear. Surprise, y'all don't drown with them. It's just a thing. But they are brothers in arms. Doesn't matter what branch. Though, Space Force, Jerry's still out on Space Force. I haven't met or seen a single person who's actually a member of Space Force. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Because you are brothers. You support each other. <laughs> Eat them crayons, you jar, jar head. <laughs> but you know what? They're like family. I was raised in a house with five kids. We constantly fought and punched and pulled on each other. But you better not go after one of us. Because then you're going to have to answer to all five of us. I understand that, 1976. This is today. This starts today. You've seen Space Force flag. Be oh, my goodness. Never mind. We're going to leave that alone. Behave. <laughs> but starting today... This is a new option. Another 
another page in the book. There you go. Absolutely. I respect the hell out of those who chose to put their life on the line for this nation. Here's the thing. My brother and I were talking. He said, you know, people always talk about how, oh, America is going to be invaded. It's going to be overrun. It's going to be, yeah, done. Uh, baby, number one, we have our military. Retired and active. No, shit like that ain't never happening. All the different branches give support to our veterans because of what they chose to do for us. I ain't talking senators. I ain't talking governors. I ain't talking presidents. Our real backbone is our military. It's the people who choose to leave their homes to go fight for this country. That's our real strength. Help out when the absolutely. I'm a 100% South Carolina veteran. There you go. And I'm sure we'll find a 100% Detroit veteran. Ohio. New York. And they'll support this nation. And they will support and defend their fellow Americans. Because as I said, when you put on that uniform... There's no arm patch that says R or D. There may be a flag there, but it doesn't say R or D. Service Connected, uh, South Carolina. Is that another group? I want y'all to share this shit, okay? If you do a live, share this shit. We owe at the bare minimum is to be able to help them with their mental health care. Help their husbands. Help their wife. Help their kids. Non-service versus service. Mm, I don't understand that real. Do you mean those who have not served in the military? VA math is weird. I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. If you can go to a non-VA health care facility for emergency psychiatric help. Oh, service connected. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry. So this, this wonderful live, it's all about serving our veterans. Hey, Twin. Hey, Miss T. How you doing this evening? Hey, honey, just had a little live about what we can do to ser better serve our veterans and the options they have. This is, uh, I'm going to tell you right now, I know, I remember when 988 came online, the VA that I go to, there was, I don't know what you call it, a, a conference room, I guess. Uh -huh. They took that conference room and they converted it into a call center. And it's not, it's not huge. Mm -hmm. But there's about 12 people, 12 trained psychiatrists who are actually sitting there manning those phones. And they switch off in shifts, like every four hours they switch off. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought this was just one of the greatest services I had ever seen them do. And in seeing my therapist, my therapist, uh, you know, when she gave me her card, she put on, she wrote on the back of that card, 988. And no, she... Now, wait a minute, Twerve. So yeah. 988 was supposed to be civilian suicidal ideation crisis call line. Are mm -hmm. you saying that um, veterans also use that line? Veterans are also allowed to use that line. Absolutely. Hmm. It's not, not strictly for civilians. It's pretty much 
the 988 line, it's pretty much for anyone who may be in crisis. Mm -hmm. And um, if you go into this call center at the VA where I live, there are posters all over the wall that say, if you can't reach us, 988. And they're facing out. So as you walk by, you know, you see these numbers and things. And uh, yeah, I thought that was a great service. Oh, I, I know I had a live yesterday because they're actually expanding it. <coughs> they just got additional funding. Oh, they did. Oh, yeah. I had a, I had. A, well, I thought it was strictly for civilians. I apologize. But I had a live yesterday about um, about the um, 988 lifeline suicidal ideation crisis hotline. Mm -hmm. And I did a complete hour live yesterday, but then today I figured I'd focus on veterans because this program starts today. Well, I think the, and I'm, I'm familiar with the program you're talking about there. Mm -hmm. um, that allows us that if we, you know, if I needed help, I could walk into any urgent care hospital anywhere, um, any kind of healthcare facility. Like not a, you know, let's be clear. I can't go into a podiatrist's office, right, or anything like that. It's got to be some kind of healthcare facility, like an urgent care or a hospital or something like that, um, and I can get the help that I need. Okay, so I, this specifically is today where you are allowed to do um, at no cost. Uh, you can go to a non VA healthcare facility for emergency healthcare psych help and mm -hmm. you can do residential care for 30 days or outpatient care for up to 90 days they do yep. not need to be enrolled in the VA system to use this benefit they just need to be a veteran and and the only downside i see to that these veterans um if they're not enrolled in a VA healthcare system they're going to need to carry their DD214 with them at all times to prove that they were in the, in the military. Um, remember, so. remember last spring, there was a bill that came up that as soon as you are discharged, with your discharge, you are given your medical record. You know, you are hereby registered with the VA, and here's a list of doctors that you can choose from. Remember Correct. that bill? Correct, yep. That would have dovetailed perfectly with this. And who said no to that bill? Oh, good Lord, yes. Yeah. 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 yeah I'm, I'm very and don't familiar. forget Manson threw his two cents in there and voted against it as well. Yeah, I'm I'm very familiar with that bill because I was thinking that was a great, great thing. Because we go through um when when we leave active duty, we go through a program called TAP. Mm -hmm. transition assistance program and in that program they try to uh they give you a couple of phone numbers because they already know where you're going mm -hmm. you know so like when i left the navy i told them i was going to ohio they gave me the list of all the facilities that were available to help me in ohio but then when i got here and i had to enroll i waited at the veterans affairs office um, with a friend of mine, T, we were probably there for like six hours. Okay. And I remember my buddy Felix looking at me, he goes, he goes, you know, it'd be so much nicer if they could do this stuff while y'all were still on active duty. And Felix was also a Navy veteran. May he rest in peace. I miss that guy. And um, I was like, yeah, that wouldn't be a bad idea. So when I saw that bill come up, I was like, you know what? That's a good ass idea. Perfect. And the fact that this is now active now, if they could have passed that bill, every member of the military discharged from then to now would already be set up. Yeah, it's real. Yep. Was all would already be set up to automatically effective today have access to this. Now you got to yep. go back. Hi, Jen. Yeah. And and um, like I said, the the enrollment process the enrollment process is not that long. Like I said, I went to the 
I went to the VA office, which is in downtown Columbus. Then I had to drive from there out to the VA clinic to actually get my veteran's ID card. Mm -hmm. And then they built a new uh, VA hospital here for us, <clears throat> which I thought was just great. Um, and they changed our veteran's ID cards, right? So because our veteran's ID cards... It was nothing but a car with your picture on it that said veteran. That was it. That that was it, right? Lord. So this, is, this is the card that we have now. Mm -hmm. Got my picture. Yep. It looks a little bit more official. There are crisis numbers on the back of it uh, if you need help with anything. And mm -hmm. um, so, you know, and, and a lot of that was due to some of the bills that Obama signed, like the uh, Vets Choice Program. Um, that's why I was able to go to the hospital uh, 15 minutes down the street from my house and get my biopsy done, as opposed to me having to drive all the way out to Dayton, Ohio, to go to Wright Pat Air Force Base and getting the biopsy done out there. You know, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's just. I don't know. I'm I'm really happy that this service came online. I truly am. Uh, and I truly hope that my fellow brothers and sisters are able to get the help that they need, especially when they're in crisis, because I've seen too many of them in crisis and everybody just kind of turns their backs on them or mm -hmm. uh, sorry, this door is closed, you know. And uh, so I, I this is definitely something that I'd be willing to help you spread the word about. Thank you. And the thing about this is this is actually a pilot program. It's a two-year pilot program. <laughs> and what they wound up doing was adding on a four-year co-program where wives, children, husbands, if they could get their own training on how to deal with a, a spouse or a son or a daughter who may be having mm -hmm. a crisis. Now, T, I don't know if you know this or not, I don't know if you know this or not, but this program was actually part of a mimic that they did from the NFL's concussion protocol, psychiatric health program oh. to try to train spouses and children to help their loved ones who may be in need and train them how to deal with it. Um, so this, this whole process right here, this was a pilot program. Okay. Or I'm not a pilot program. You already said it. It's kind of a mimic program from the uh, NFL's concussion protocol for spouses. Mm -hmm. And they just they just kind of picked it up and ran with it. And they said, look, we may not have as much money as the NFL, but God damn it, we are the federal government. We got more money than everybody. And we don't own a day of the week, but we are going to start trying to own our veterans. Right, right. And now, I, and I admit it to people, understand, this was actually brought up and signed and authorized in 2020. Mm-hmm. Okay? And just now, and, and it was something that, that I, again, I'll give credit where credit is due. It was something that Donald Trump was fully on board with. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'll give the credit where credit is due. Yep. You know, um, anytime I can see my fellow brothers and sisters getting the help that they need, um, I mean, I think the number right now is 17 a day. Mm -hmm. 17 oh, no, no. a no, day. No, 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 no. It's closing in on 100 a day. Are you sure? It's closing in on 100 a day, either straight up suicide or attempted. Hold on. Let me, let me double check. Because there was check a number. Me on it. Check me on it. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. <laughs> Let me check real quick. Because I know we used to use a number. Um, and it was it was because of that number. It was a small number it stuck in my head. But then when you tallied it up, <clears throat> when you tallied it up over time, over a year's time, uh, was, was 22 sorry sorry Brian corrected me that's okay I don't mind being corrected shit if I'm wrong educate me 
So according to AWP's findings, 22 to 24 veterans ages 18 to 64 uh, commit the unaliving each day, and 18 to 20 veterans in the same age group die per day by self-injury. Combine this point <laughs> to at wow. least... Combine this com- this point so at least forty to forty four veterans taking their lives every day. Damn. But the number used to be twenty two. It was it was flat out twenty two unalivings a day from our veterans. Um, <laughs> and I I always remember that number off the top of my head because you know if you if you if you have twenty two, and then you multiply that by three hundred sixty five, that actually gives you. Hold on, I'm not really good at math, but let's just say 22. Why does my calculator have ads in it now? What the the hell is that shit? 22. What the freak is going on here? No, there's no update. 22 times 365. That was 8,030 veterans a year yeah. unaliving themselves. And 8,000 veterans a year. One, th- one thing that I said to myself, I remember when I first discovered this a few years back, one of the things that I said to myself, okay, why is this just now making headlines? Or why, like, why can't we do something about this? And um, I think overall... We have too many people, not just veterans, but uh, just regular folks, as I would call them, that also do this to themselves. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we you, we can call 988. We can walk into this health care clinic uh, and get the help we need. But we still don't have the mental health professionals, the number of mental health professionals in this country yeah. to be able to help everybody. And that's mm-hmm. what... That's what saddens me the most. Yep. You know? We are losing far too many veterans, far too many young, under the age of 50, Yeah, who are doing this. Between the ages of 22 to 64, um, or I'm sorry, 18 to 64, who, who do this. And it just, uh, it, it just, it's just sad. And Donald, please learn to read a room. I mean, Jesus Christ, man. Come on. No, nope, he's gone. He's gone. And my <laughs> moderators, I have told them, kick out, block, kick out, block. If they're not with the conversation, scroll on. Goodbye. Right. Now, there's another There's another article here, T, and I wanted to tell you about this real quick also. This actually comes from the VA, and, and they do an annual report at the end of the year. Um. They have it broken down by uh, sex, age, race, and ethnicity, uh, how many years after their military separation. It's it's actually a pretty detailed report. Um, And you can see what they can do with that report is they can try to pin down which age group is going through the most turmoil with this many years out of service, you know, after they left the military. So it's a it's a really good report. It's a really good report. And uh, yeah, I I don't know. I'm just like when, when we went and did our charity thing and I, we talked to the homeless folks there, uh, we came across a few veterans and I was just, I was just sad, man. I was like, how can, <clears throat> how can our city let this happen to, to happen to our brothers and sisters? You know, and I, I didn't know what to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Someone brought up, um, what was it? Um, what was the name of the vet place? Uh, vet, mm, shoot, I didn't jot it down. Uh, soldier had, um, dang it, I put down 877 war vet. I forgot to write down the other place that he was talking about. Vet center, thank you. Vet center, yeah, vet center. Yeah, I mean, the for me personally, like it took me a long time to realize this because I had, um, you know, I, I had been able to 
suppress my PTSD for a very long time. And then last year around October, it started coming back and I was having nightmares. Um, I mean, it was, it was bad to you. I was having nightmares. Uh, I started sleepwalking. I mean, it, it was bad. And the downside to me was I thought it was something that I could handle. Mm -hmm. So in me thinking I could handle it, I had to come to the realization that I couldn't handle it anymore. And so I started to seek professional help because I started to get that mindset. The last thing I want to do is hurt myself or hurt people around me. You know, so I sought that professional help for myself. And uh, my therapist has been great. I think the downside is, is some of us, um, cause you know, I had that stubborn attitude. I think some people who are in crisis, mental health crisis, they either don't recognize that they're in that mental health crisis or they just are too stubborn to get the help, which is, I was for about a month or so. Yep. Exactly. This, this right here, this would have helped veterans from Vietnam. This would have helped veterans from Iraq. This would have helped veterans from Afghanistan and hopefully mm -hmm. now will. But I'm glad this is here. But there is so much more work to be done. Yes, it is. You know, I, I'm going to pop you out. Well, let me let me tell you this real quick before we go. OK. Um, I came across a young lady about four days ago. And she got into my live and she said, Swerving, can I come up? I want to ask you some questions. I said, sure. So she got into my live and she asked me, you know, her father is a veteran and she's trying to make sure that he gets the help that he needs. However, she lives the closest VA. There's somewhere in North Dakota or Dakota mm -hmm. around like Fargo or some shit, some way backwards area. And I said, well, you know, have you ever heard of the Vets Choice Program? She goes, no. I said, look at the Vets Choice Program and then call to your local VA there. I mean, set, she, the closest one to them was like a six-hour drive away. And I said, call them and see what they tell you because you do have the option to go to a medical facility that's closer to you. You don't have to always drive to the VA. That's what the Vets Choice Program does. Mm -hmm. She messaged me yesterday afternoon and said, Swerve, you're not going to believe this. My father is going to a doctor that's like two miles from here. We got him. We got him some help that he needs. He's going to the doctor that lives about two miles from here. Our local hospital is going to be handling his knee surgery uh, that's coming up in a couple of months. Um, he also has a, um, oh shit, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, the people that help you with diet, nutritionist. Nutritionist. He's yeah, he's mm -hmm. got a nutritionist, nutritionist now, a new eye doctor, and a new dentist. And she said, I never knew this was available. So thank you so much for pointing me in that direction. I said, hey, not a problem. Not a problem it's, at all. It's the, it's the same with the 988 line. When I brought that up yesterday, people were like, what is that? It's been around for over a year, but we hear very little about it. The VA, uh, Havarti, the VA does cover some dental, some dental. And uh, like I know my VA out here, the only thing they will do if I go in and tell them I got a toothache, the only thing they will do will deaden up my jaw and extract the tooth. They're not going to do any drilling or anything like that. So it all depends on what state you live in and what they do for you. So, T, I'm going to let you go ahead and get out of here. My dinner's about ready. So you, All have, right. you have a good one, T. And remember, I always come here for the tea and not the Kool-Aid. All righty. Thank you. Take care, T. Bye-bye, honey. Anyone can use the 988 Suicide Crisis Hotline. That's open to anybody. Please, people, pass that along. And see if this will benefit to your own community. Hey, Brian. I am here for the Kool-Aid, but I don't want this. Uh, I don't want this 
I don't want this Kool-Aid that's already got, I want to have to add my own sugar. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want We the, don't do Kool-Aid. We do I want cheese. the, I want the little tiny package of Kool-Aid that makes like five gallons. And then you put like uh, five or 15 cups of sugar in it. That's how I grew up. <laughs> well, I got tired of Kool-Aid. I only do tea now. Well, you know, and the thing is, is grape Kool-Aid is not the worst Kool-Aid, okay? I'm just saying, like, we've had this argument. Everybody's all like, no, grape Kool-Aid's the worst. No, the orange Kool-Aid was the worst. That yeah, was the worst. Weak. It yeah. was weak. <laughs> totally weak. How you doing, Brian? I'm good. I love you. How are you doing? Uh, pretty good. I just figured I'd do a back-to-back -back live um, last night and today about mental health. You know, I love this, but you brought up something earlier that bothered me and I put it in the comments and I didn't get booted. So I'm going to, because you said this is four years. Yeah. It's a two year pilot program with a four year training program for like husbands and wives who may have a spouse who was in the military or even parents who may have a child that was in the military and is suffering some mental issues. Moist Poetic said it's either grape, or it's not grape, it's either red or purple. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but D, this is, you know, ever since John Stewart retired, right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden John Stewart became our go-to guy for fighting for the, uh, you know, fighting for the police officers and the first responders and now fighting for our boys that are standing next to the burn pit pits overseas. Yep. And now, you know what I'm saying? Like, who expected John? I mean, I'm not saying that John Stewart was a, wasn't a great guy before, but good Lord, the man became the Messiah of let's get shit done. <laughs> He's you know no I mean? longer tied to corporate media. Yeah. He's free to but, run wild. But the problem that I have is these four-year contracts that they do with some of this stuff. And it's like, it's so political that pisses me off. It just pisses me off. And, I, and I'm not I saying like, it's not good progress. I'm saying like, yeah. let's stop doing things two and four years at a time. It's Here's not like thing. we're going to run out of vets. Here's the thing. That means right now we start kicking ass and taking names and going, Hey, we know in two years, you only funded this for two years. So uh, you need to get working on right now, continuing that and making it permanent. Yeah, I know. But that military, That's on budget, up. man. All y'all, pass it on. Start kicking ass, taking names. I was really surprised to see that a lot of these VA programs and stuff don't even come out of the military budget. Did you know that? No, they don't. Yeah. They don't. We're well, kicking eight. Listen, you can take this right out of the military budget. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, so anyways, God love you, vets. I wish we were doing more immediately. And we need to do more. And Brian, I, I think I actually spoke to you maybe last spring, you and Swerve, about the H.R. 4673 bill. It would have made it permanent that anytime someone is discharged from the military, they are automatically registered with the VA. They are automatically giving a listing of available doctors in whatever area. They say, hey, I'm moving to Missouri. Okay, here's your list of doctors in Missouri who you can go register with. You're already registered with the VA. Done. Tie that into this. That would have dovetailed perfectly well here's a weird thing t and i and i don't i don't know enough about this to i can't speak intelligently on this but let me just ask you a question why do we have a va and i ain't trying to piss anybody off but any retired veteran in our country should be able to walk into any hospital in our country we have medicaid we have medicare why yep. don't they have access to every single place that we have Medicaid and Medicare at? I, I don't understand yeah. that. Yeah. The, the fact that they put restrictions on it, that you have to not be able to, I think it 
find a, um, a VA within 40 miles, and then you can go to a regular everyday hospital. Why? I have a friend, I have a friend of mine that is from actually Vietnam era, right? Old guy, old, old vet. Buddy of mine, we'll call him Harlan because his name's actually Harlan. And uh, he suffers from consuming or breathing in uh, napalm. Mm -hmm. Right. And he has chronic lung issues. So he has to see a specialist. He told me the process that he goes through. Now we live in Southern Missouri in Springfield, Missouri, which is 40 miles North of us. We have what's called the medical mile. And it is some of the best hospital facilities in the entire Midwest. People come from all over the Midwest to Springfield, Missouri because of their hospital facilities. He gets a call from the VA because he's got to go get checked on because he's having problems breathing again. And they said, okay, we'll make an appointment for you. They send him six hours north to a clinic, not even a hospital, to a clinic that's part of the VA program. Six hours. He's got to drive up there, drive back just to be tested at this clinic and really no services provided to him. That was my first understanding of what the hurdles are that some of our veterans have to go through just to be seen. And this is an old man. He's older than me, T. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I was flabbergasted. 40 miles north of here, there's the best medical facilities in the country. Can't go to any of them. But if it's over 40 miles, I thought he could. <clears throat> No, send him six Wait. hours. Wait six minute, hours up in the middle of Missouri. What, that's what choice is. That's what veterans choice is. Um, if you have to go more than 40 miles, you can use the closest possible, but they make you get referrals for special. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because, um, yeah, I handle referrals. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Is that what you do? I do. I handle some oh. of the referrals from the VA. Um, they are lot, either two, four, six, sometimes 12 visits on a referral. No, he had to go up to central Missouri, not St. Louis, not Kansas City, but central place in Missouri. It was six hours for him to get there. Now, I think it was pretty much because he's old and he can't see very good, so he had to drive really slow, but way the hell out of, out of his way just to get tested. For this lung issue mm -hmm. at a clinic. I mean, and it was like a, it was like a, 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 a strip mall clinic T it was like the kind of clinic that you see right next to a Dunkin' Donuts. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. The more I picture this, the more I'm going, no, what that man needs is a referral to those closer hospitals. So he doesn't have to travel that far. Cause if this is the, the medical mile, they damn mm -hmm. sure got to have pulmonology there. Oh yeah, I know. These are the these were these were the hurdles that he described to me. Now he deals mm -hmm. directly with the VA. Came out of Vietnam, has always had this these problems. So he's been dealing with the VA, and they sent him all over the place. They've sent him down into Arkansas. They've sent him everywhere. Yeah, he 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 doesn't have somebody to um to speak up for him. He doesn't have somebody to support him. That's that that's a problem I see right there, one hundred percent. Because there's no way in hell this man should have to go that far. What is this? T I I I work in appeals, so if someone's bill doesn't get paid, I handle those requests. Ah. Oh, okay. So yeah, somebody needs to advocate for him and get him a local fucking referral. Do you know where I live? I, I, I understand. I would I invite understand. you to. I would invite you to my house, but I live right next to the most patriotic, God fearing, God loving, General Lee supporting fucking area in the whole world, Branson, Missouri. Branson, exactly. God exactly. love, Help bless America, that. Missouri. Mm -hmm. God bless our veterans, Branson, Missouri. Mouth service. I hate, just just I lip hate service. I hate this town. 
I love this town, <laughs> T. Don't get me wrong. I love where I live, but I mm -hmm. hate I hate the performative aspect of everything around me. It's crazy. There you go. There you go. I was meeting I was meeting with the Veterans Task Force. I will go on record to say this. I hope you post this shit on Spotify. I was meeting with the Veterans Task Force of Branson, Missouri, a group that's supposed to be advocating for these people to be able to get services, right? Uh -huh. And I had a meeting with the Theater League of Branson, Missouri. And for those of you out there listening that have never been to Branson, Missouri, let me educate you. In Branson, Missouri, every single theater, 70 of them, every single theater plays uh, Proud to be an American, that song, Lee Greenwood. You want to sing it? You want to sing it to you? No. I'm proud to be an American <laughs> because at least I know I'm free. And as soon as they play that, they drop a 60-foot flag on their stage. And they ask all of their veterans, family of veterans, brothers and sisters of veterans, they ask all of you to stand up and celebrate the veterans of our great country in Branson, Missouri, on all 70 stages. Doesn't that sound wonderful? Doesn't that sound beautiful? It sounds so beautiful. Do you know who's sick of it? The veterans. They're yeah. so sick of it. You go to four yeah. shows in this town and you're sick of that. So I was meeting with the theater league president and I said, listen, I know that you guys like doing this flag dropping thing and recognizing our veterans, but can you do me a favor? Can you control? Whoop. I lost you. Oh, I lost you. Oh, I lost you. Oh, I lost you. Brian. Brian. No, Brian, you still you there now? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. So I said, could you do me a favor? Can you contribute one dollar of your ticket sales to the Veterans Task Force that's here in Branson, that's here to help veterans get services like you're talking about? Just one dollar <laughs> out of your seventy dollar ticket. Could you just contribute one dollar and tell the people when they come to the show, say? Each one of you that buy, bought a ticket today, we're contributing $1 to the Veterans Task Force. Today, that's $370, $400, whatever it might be. Every day, 70 theaters contributing $1 of a ticket sale. We would have the most effective Veterans Task Force in the entire country here. Mm -hmm. They're like, no, that, no, that's too much. That's too much. We're just going to keep singing the song. We're just going to keep singing the song and embarrassing veterans. That's what we do here in Branson. I tr I bite my tongue. Usually, you know how people um say thank you for your service. Yeah. I always go. You really want to thank them? Do something for them. Yeah. Because that 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 little thank you for your service is like patting someone on their head. My okay, question: well, is, What the, did you do to help <clears> them? Let me tell let me tell you the real. Let me tell you the T T. The T is is there's two different types of veterans. In Branson, Missouri. In Branson, Missouri, there's two different types of veterans. All right. Okay. There's the, there's the, there. I don't know what I don't know what the age group is, but there's the, there's the old veteran. T. Do you know what I'm talking about? The old guy with the hat that's got all of his credentials on his hat, you know, and everything. Mm -hmm. And he's walking around to every single business saying, "How much of a discount do I get?" That's the first one. There ain't nothing wrong with yeah. that guy, but he's old and he's looking for a deal. That's right? okay. And then the other veteran is my fr some of them are my friends that just get embarrassed by the thank you for your service. They get embarrassed by seeing people providing so much mouth service and no actionable help. There you go. That's the there other you type, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, I love both of them. Understand. Both of them. Both of them sacrifice their time, their lives, their friends, their family. Their body. Both of them did that. I love both of those types. But this new type of veteran ain't going to put up with this shit much longer. This new type wants these things like you've got up on the, on the screen here. They want us to take care of the people that put their lives on the line to serve our country. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. If I put my body on the line, uh, mm -hmm. excuse me, health care. I don't want to have to get food stamps. Pay me. Yeah. No more no more uh thoughts and prayers, MFers. We don't need thoughts and prayers. Mm -mm. Screw <laughs> that. 
We need appointment times. Those of us who put our lives on the line. That's it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm saying thoughts and prayers are great. Just write a check right next to them. I thank you. Up their pay because our military should be paid a hell of a lot more. Forget about the generals. Oh, Dude, y'all did the time. It's time to pay those who are putting boots on the ground. Take care and, of them. Yeah, at least, at least after they have pro have done their service, at least provide them with a life after the fact. Thank you. Thank you. No, no veteran should ever be homeless in this country. We have too well, many no. empty fucking this, houses that could be used this, to house our veterans. This is a free country. You can choose to be homeless if you want, but no veteran should have to be homeless. Mm -mm. Ever. No. No. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up, Brian. Thank you so I much for you. popping in. I appreciate. And no, I didn't mind you saying that because you know what? Our veteran, our um, our senators need to be paying their own damn insurance, and veterans should be getting as good a medical coverage as those who are sitting in office. That's it. Yep, I agree. Both All right, love you, T. I'll pop out of here. <laughs> All right, bye, bye, honey. Uh, that was actual rank choice was passed under Obama. This was passed under Trump. And it's great. It's great. Anyway, you guys have a good evening. I just popped in to have a little conversation. We had our, our um, civilian mental health yesterday. And we have our veteran mental health today. Yeah, I know. You still need a referral. Shoot. Y'all be well. Remember, trust the tea, not the Kool-Aid. Absolutely. Send me, inbox me info. This was just something I wanted to try to do. Moderators, thank you so much for taking names and kicking ass of those who were not actually interested in having a conversation. Y'all be well. Hey, you can look me up over on Spotify. Conversations. Tea time with tea. Look forward to hearing from you. Y'all have a good one. Bye-bye.